I'm Craig Wright, now Professor Emeritus of Music at Yale. Some of you may know me from my Yale Coursera course, Introduction to Classical Music, which I'm pleased to say has had more than 200,000 participants join in. But how did I, as a music professor, come to the topic of genius? Well, I came to this exploration of genius through the study of genius Mozart and his autographed manuscripts, studying them around the world. Curious about Mozart, I then started looking at the drawings and sketches of Leonardo da Vinci, and then started reading about Albert Einstein, and I saw common modes of thinking among these three geniuses. Well, if you're going to pursue the sciences, what one person is the only person to have won two Nobel Prizes in two different scientific fields? Well, that took me to Marie Curie. But why, supposedly, so few women geniuses? Well, Virginia Woolf offered an explanation. Then on to other marginalized figures such as Frederick Douglass and even those with so-called disabilities such as Yoyoi Kusama, Beethoven, and Van Gogh. Eventually, I started a course at Yale called Exploring the Nature of Genius, which I taught for some dozen years. And during that time, I wrote a book, The Hidden Habits of Genius. And now I bring that Yale Genius course to you online as The Nature of Genius. I will be joined in this course by several colleagues from Yale who will provide insights into areas in which they are specialists. First of these is Lauren Summers. Lauren and I have worked together over the years at the Yale Alumni Academy. Lauren is a great interviewer, better than I, and thus she will be introducing most of our guests in our course. These guests include Yale professor of astrophysics, Meg Uri, yes, a real rocket scientist, on the issue of women, genius and gender, and inclusion generally. Here's a quick excerpt from Meg's interview. We have this, this, this idea that we live in a meritocracy where geniuses will just float to the top and um, you know, all will be well. And I worry a lot about all the untapped genius that's out there, that the, the, the brilliance, the, the ideas, the, you know, the solutions to today's problem, particularly if we're talking about STEM, uh, you know, technical scientific issues are staring us right in the face all the time. Big, big problems uh, from climate change uh, to, uh, to pandemics and, and beyond. And, uh, and we need all the talent that's out there. We'll also be joined by Yale Director of Admissions, Margaret Dahl, discussing the subject of how we can judge and encourage the best young minds of today. And also by psychiatrist and Yale Medical School graduate, Dr. Eileen Jennings, on the question of genius and prodigies and the pros and cons of gifted programs. And finally, by Yale alumnus, Roger McNamee, founder of private equity firm Silver Lake Partners and Elevation Partners, and a philanthropist who will discuss the topic of genius, money, and innovation. As you might expect, in a course on genius that emphasizes Western culture, we'll meet the usual exceptional suspects. Historical figures such as the aforementioned Mozart, Da Vinci, Einstein, and Curie, and Shakespeare, and then Nikola Tesla, down to the late Nobel Prize winning author, Toni Morrison. And of course, we will come to know some geniuses of today, not only well-known tech entrepreneurs such as Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Bill Gates, and pop artists Kanye West and Lady Gaga, but also less well-known scientists such as Catalin Carrico and Jennifer Doudna. Geniuses from industry, the arts, the sciences, and political ideology, well, they'll all be here. But the point of this course is not only to explore past accomplishment, acts of genius, but also to use what we learn from our geniuses so as to make our own lives better, release the little bit of genius in all of us. Here's how our, our colleague, Dr. Eileen Jennings, framed the issue during her interview. The point of this course isn't to tell stories about interesting people in the past who did wonderful things that we now call geniuses. 
I think the point of this course is that we need geniuses. We need creative solutions. We need innovation. We need to fix things that are broken in ways that we, do, in, with technologies and ideas and, and methods that we just simply don't have right now because they're not working. That is something that we all need to address on an individual level or a global level. But certainly throughout history, geniuses have a way of fixing things. Geniuses can catapult evolution. The, the ideas that come from, from geniuses and groups of geniuses can lead to remarkable change in a fairly short time. First study the geniuses and then apply what we learn. That's our aim. Every course should have both a clear goal and a clear path to that goal. Our path will come in three sections, three parts. Part one, week one, what is genius and what genius is not. Part two, weeks two, three, and the beginning of four, what makes genius? What modes of thinking does the genius employ? Part three, the conclusion. How can we emulate the genius? How can we adopt these modes of thinking to allow us individually and collectively as a society to work more efficiently and more humanely? At the end of each lesson in our course will come assessment questions designed not only to test your knowledge of the information presented, but more importantly, that ask you to use this information and your own life experiences to engage in practical exercises of critical thinking. Critical thinking. Will this course make you a genius? No, at least not immediately. But it will help you think about your strengths and weaknesses, how you raise your children, choose the schools they attend, spend your time and money, vote in free elections, and perhaps find your own passion or obsession as these geniuses found theirs. But for this to work, first, we have to consider what genius is. So let's get started.